right before COVID hit, I was actually supposed to be going to Las Vegas and I was going to be presenting to um, a bunch of auto care owners. So these are uh, mechanics, sure. like auto shops, 15,000 auto care owners. And to and prepare for that, I was um, interviewing some of these auto care owners to talk about um, urgency and some of the challenges that they have in their, in their world. And one of them told me the story, and I think it ties into what you said. So I want to get your reaction to it. He said, you have to avoid the hero trap because it feels so good to be a hero. You've done all these people's jobs before and they're asking for help. You can just swoop in, solve the problem. They're like, oh my gosh, you're amazing, Wayne. Thank you so much for doing that. He said, but then he said, when you do that, you're actually perpetuating chaos and, and codependency. So it, it doesn't really create a healthy, you gotta figure out a, a system or structure to operate without you. That was what he told well, me. So I'd be curious to your thoughts around that story. Oh, it's absolutely true and Here's the reason behind the hero thing. We know how to do that. Yeah. Right? We were really good at that. That's how we got here. We get to do the part of the job we're good at. Sign me up. Yeah. As a leader now, there's all this stuff that I don't really know how I how to do it. And maybe I'm not real confident in it. And I, I feel like I'm BSing my way through. But I know how to do that. Yeah. And people think I'm really good when I do that. And they they like me and look how competent because you can't trust a leader who isn't competent. Yeah, that's fair. Which is really interesting because competence doesn't mean they can do your job as good as you can. Competence means they can perform at some level that you aren't worried about them. Yeah. Right. And you don't have to be a subject matter expert to be a competent leader, which a lot of people kind of freak out about. But the hero thing is absolutely true. And, and you know, all of these things, letting your schedule overtake your life and, um, you know, not paying attention to your own guardrails, let alone anybody else, is really, really, it starts from a good place. Right. Yeah. You're not going to ask anybody to do anything you wouldn't do. Uh, you're going to take one for the team because it frees Alan up to have dinner with his family. Right. Mary has been working really, really hard and she doesn't need to be on this meeting. I'll do it. Right. We're, we're coming from the best of intentions and the most pure of places. And yet, ultimately, if the leader isn't recharged, isn't refreshed, is burned out. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a really simple answer. 60% of people with PTOs coming off, and for managers, that number is at least that, if not higher, haven't taken PTO during this crisis. Oh, wow. Well, why would I take time off? I'm already home. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Right? Ask any HR person how much PTO is banked at their company for quarter four. Yeah, probably a lot. And you're right. And 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 we just went through what would have been the time when everyone would have taken it, all those summer vacations. Kevin and I just had this conversation. The wife and I were supposed to go to Puerto Rico in March. That mm. got canceled. We rescheduled till October. Oh, Guess oh, what? Uh oh. That ain't happening. <laughs> oh no. That's 10 days of vacation time that I was supposed to have had in March that's still on the books, plus the other little bit of time I've had left over. So I've actually been taking long weekends, either yeah. a Friday or a Monday. So I'm taking my PTO one day at a time. Okay. So I want to go into something that you're saying. I want to summarize in a few themes I'm hearing to see if I've got this right. So the first one is this idea as leaders, we're modeling for our team, just kind of like parents, right? We, 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 yep. we can't say, well, do what I say, don't do what I do. They're going to do what you do. If you're right, he's responding to, if you're writing emails at one in the morning, you're sending the signal, you better be ready to get my emails at one in the morning. Exactly so, right. So, so we're modeling that. So we have to be aware of that. Here's the part that I'm also curious on your thoughts, even like vacation. How prescriptive should we be with our teams in terms of taking vacation or not overworking? I mean, can we tell people to set boundaries? Can, can, I think can we do that? To. Okay. Because especially in North America, right? This is a North American problem. Yeah. Um, fair, very fair. We know that most Americans do not take all the vacation time that's owed to them. 
And the more senior they are, the more that's true. We take pride in the fact that we work insane hours. And the unspoken, mostly it's unspoken. Sometimes people say the secret part out loud is if you are not sacrificing your personal time for your work, you don't care. You don't want to get promoted. You're not a good team member. You're not, there's this culture of overwork. And even if you don't believe that, even if you're incredibly sensitive to your team and you're trying to help them, you are not going to beat a hundred years of social conditioning. Yeah, that's right. Just by yourself. <laughs> So organizations need to support that. They need to make a point. Hey, guess what? You've got PTO coming up. Make sure you take it. So here's... It, it, well, it's it's interesting. In, in The Long Distance Leader, in the book, we have a model called the three O's, which is, like most models, incredibly simplistic. But it says that in order for a leader to get the work done, you have to think about outcomes, which is the work. Excellent. You need to think about others, your team mates are people, and you need to think about the relationships and all that. But there's ourselves. Oh, interesting. And we are really good at two of the three. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hearing you talk, something I never ever coach my clients on, but I, maybe I should, is when I'm talking to them about having development conversations with their team. I say, you know, every mm -hmm. month have at least one development conversation where you talk to your, you, each member of your team and say, you know, what do you want to learn or grow this month and how can I support you? You know what I never encourage them to do is, to, is have um, boundary conversations with their team. What are you doing to take care of yourself? What are you saying no to this month? I never mm -hmm. encourage my leaders to say that to their direct reports. Maybe I one should. Of the, one of the things that we, and, and during this lockdown COVID thing, it's become even more important, is do you know your people's work circumstances? Somebody's working from home. Who are they trapped in the house with? And we're spending a lot of time on people who are trapped with the kids and the spouse. Think about single people. Oh yeah, absolutely. Who are now completely socially isolated. Not that people don't go out, but in our normal workplace, almost two thirds of our social interactions during a week take place at the workplace. Yeah.